you believe it? The Olympic Games are almost here. The athletes are heading to Tokyo and soon they'll be competing for the gold. There's a very special story that I want to share that represents the highest ideal of an Olympic athlete. It represents an Olympian who understood that they were training and running not only for themselves, but for a higher cause. Now this story goes back to 1936 Berlin. Germany was hosting the Olympics and Hitler was spewing all kinds of nonsense about blue-eyed, blonde-haired people being smarter and stronger and faster and wiser. They were the supreme race, the Aryan race. Now, everyone else was somewhere beneath and at the very bottom of the list were the Jews and the Africans. Now, the two fastest runners that the Americans put forth that year were African-American men, and one of them was Jesse Owens. You probably know the name. So he goes into the Olympics, and here's Hitler watching. They run the 100-meter dash, and who wins the race? Jesse Owens, and who comes in second? but Ralph Metcalf, the other American. He was a track legend in his own right. It was humiliating to Hitler and his athletes. Here's a clip of that iconic race. The crowd responded with thunderous admiration, but there would be no audience with the Fuhrer. The president of the International Olympic Committee had insisted that Hitler no longer congratulate any medalist in his box unless he agreed to greet them all. Hitler understood that this would mean down the line he would have to shake the hand of a black man. This was not something he wanted to do, and so he told Ballet Latour that in the future he would not congratulate publicly any of the athletes. Acknowledged or not, the news of Owen's victory was broadcast worldwide, piercing Hitler's theory of Aryan supremacy. A day after his first gold, Owens added a second. Wow, what an amazing race. And it's so hard for me to comprehend that Hitler chose to not greet the athletes after that event. He had to do that in order to avoid shaking hands and congratulating a black person. But that was just the beginning. Then there was the 200 meter dash. And who won? Jesse Owens. Then there was the 400 meter relay. And who won that? the Americans with Jesse Owens and Ralph Metcalf. Then there was the long jump. And who won that? Jesse Owens. He won four gold medals at those Olympics. You see, he knew that he was fighting for something more than just a gold medal on his chest. It wasn't about him. It was about changing the world. It was about standing up to the injustice, the nonsense, the hate. You can't help but see that when you see him run. Now, Owens and his team ran for something bigger than themselves. Jesse Owens said that it wasn't so much about Hitler, but it was for the African-Americans in his own country. Hi, I'm Nancy, and I'm part of the teaching team here at Sycamore Creek, and we're in the series called The Games. And today's topic is all about training. So what does it take to train to become a world-class athlete like Jesse Owens? Here's a quote from Owens that says it all. We all have dreams, but in order to make dreams come into reality, it takes an awful lot of determination, dedication, self-discipline, and effort. Now, we all have dreams and goals that we want to achieve, and training helps us achieve these goals. And today, we'll explore how we can train for the Christian life. Now, with the Olympics coming up soon, I think about all the athletes who are hard at work getting ready to compete. But they want to do more than just compete. They want to win. They train hard and they train every day. And they do all kinds of things to get in shape, like stretching, and running, lifting weights. They constantly practice with swimming, riding bikes, more running, more racing, and balancing on skinny beams. Now, all of this training will come down to stories of courage and perseverance, overcoming obstacles, thrilling victories, 
agonizing defeats, and everything in between. Records will be set and gold medals will be won. Everybody tends to get caught up in it. Now, I love watching the Olympics, but honestly, that type of training isn't something that I can really relate to. And I'll let you in on a little secret. I'm not what you'd call an athletic type. No, I'm sorry, that's very shocking, but it's true. I just wasn't blessed with these extraordinary physical gifts. But I still have goals and the things that I want to accomplish. Now, I have a lot of skills that I've acquired throughout my life and I've trained for. I went to college and trained to become a counselor. I'm also a musician, so I've done plenty of training to work with my voice and get, become a better singer, learn to play piano, learn to play saxophone. In fact, I even competed in marching band competitions. Now, I have a current goal right now, which is to get back into golfing. Now that is going to take a lot of training. We've all done some type of training in our lives. So what kind of things have you trained for and how did it work out for you? You can put your answers in the chat as we return to the studio.